Hey there, we're here in the Cortland Jail, in the middle of the desert of Arizona. We're going to be talking to you about bamboo, bamboo, bamboo. goats the goat people have found us they've been here before us <laughs> hey everybody welcome back to our channel i'm carrie my other half doug is filming we are two rebels off grid the rebels are our dogs if you don't know and if you're new to our channel we are all about homesteading we actually sold everything and moved out of colorado about nine months ago and hit the road and ended up here on our property in cochise county arizona we're talking about all things homesteading, so make sure and subscribe if you haven't yet, and stay tuned. So we're switching it up. We're coming to you today from Cortland, Arizona. And Cortland, Arizona is a ghost town now. It was actually founded in 1909, and the person that the town was named after was Cortland Young. Portland Young was one of the owners of the Great Western Mining Company. And like a lot of the towns in this area, it was settled on mining. And what they were known for was copper. Although turquoise is also a big product out here, but copper was the main thing that they were mining in Portland. So Portland um, is at the base of the Dragoon Mountains. It's kind of in the foothills. And it is about 15 miles from Tombstone, Arizona, which a lot of people know about, which is a really cool little old Western town that's been around a long time. So we're checking out Cortland and there's a couple little things that as you're driving through the town, you can see one of them is the pack rat table. We've driven by it a ton of times, but we've never actually stopped. Yep. So do you, <laughs> <laughs> you want to explain what the, what you might be wondering what what a pack rat table is. Yeah, so the pack rat table, I'm guessing it's been going on for a while, a tradition that's been going on here for a while. I don't know how long, but uh, you go there and they have an assortment of just people leave stuff there, uh, maybe for good luck or whatever, to have the pack rat haul it off. Cause you know, pack rats are notorious for hauling off shiny objects and anything on your campsite, basically. If you leave a bolt or anything, it might end up disappearing. But yeah, they like uh, shiny stuff and paper and... Yeah, but we're just visiting Gleason, uh, up North Cortland, and uh, just checking it out. And obviously they needed a jail there for some reason, but once again, we ended up following the footsteps of some, some uh, vandals, or goat people is what we talked about in the last video. So you'll see uh, all sorts of graffiti going on in these old historical buildings still yeah we the la our last two i think it was our last two videos or two recent videos that we actually were filming also in Cortland, and there is lots of ruins out here so you can reference our older videos actually i'll put the links in here above if you if you can see those and you can watch those it's interesting it's just really interesting to reflect back on who came and settled here and what it, what these people were like. They had to be pretty hardy. There, you know, there wasn't a lot of stuff out here for them. It's pretty brutal, I think, way to, to live. And miners were tough people. They are a, a kind of toughness that I don't think we have much of that left anymore. So it's pretty interesting to hear some of the stories and, and hear what mining was like. I mean, they started doing it by hand and it's just, I mean, by hand, digging into the rock. It's just amazing. So anyway, we find we find this stuff pretty interesting. We also get kind of sad when we see all the graffiti that people have spray painted inside these buildings. It's a bummer. It's unavoidable. It's been painted over in a few spots, but people keep coming back and graffitiing. So kind of ruins it in a way, but we still really enjoy these ruins. 
One of the things that we decided to leave on the pack rat table was our souvenir pen that we got from Bamboo Ranch, although we actually didn't leave it because we didn't want to leave it. <laughs> we just were showing it to you to transition into our discussion about bamboo and whether or not you can actually grow bamboo in the desert. Yeah, but first let's go back to our little garden that we were showing, our zone one kitchen garden slash wind terraforming trees, our pioneer trees that we put in in front of our campsite here. Now that we moved up on the hill, we put them really close. We can babysit them. Uh, we can check the leaves, make sure they're not wilting every day and, you know, just keep a really good eye on them and to intervene with their whatever they need for that day, you know, water, shade, water, <laughs> water shade, wind protection. So you guys know we had to recently move from our original site up here, which we are really happy that we did, but we had a lot of extra space on our pad that we put our RV on. And we got to talking about how that would be like the perfect place to start our, it's not really the first garden, it's like a second garden location because we still have some stuff growing down below where we move from. But there's, it's windy up here, it's windy down there too, but it seems like we might get a little bit more crosswinds up here. And then of course, we don't have tall trees yet, so there's no shade. We, I think we shared in another video how we had to take our awning off. It basically got bent in a really big wind gust. So we had to remove that and the first thing we noticed was we are just exposed. So when you're outside, you know, eating outside or whatever we're doing out there, it's just intense sun all the time. So we invested in some of these sunshades that we have been, we're really enjoying these sunshades. Doug has placed them strategically over the garden to try to block some of the sun. And then he made kind of um, an impromptu kind of shade slash awning for our RV so that when we're sitting out there we're more comfortable and the dogs are too so and then we've got pallets that we picked up for free in various locations and we're using those kind of as wind blocks and also to provide more shade um, during certain times of the day. The motive is behind this video is two bamboo trees that we got. We're going <laughs> to show you where we got those and we talked to a lady at Bamboo Ranch in Tucson where we got these plants and we'll just let you sit, we'll sit back and let you enjoy this little uh semi interview that we had with the with the owner of bamboo ranch yep she's one of the owners it's her husband and wife and they've been doing this for several decades and their yard i can't remember how big she said what was it an Probably acre? An acre i think she said it was an acre but it's just tons of bamboo in various stages and ages and it's absolutely beautiful it provides beautiful shade and if you've been around bamboo when there's wind it makes a really neat calming sound and um, we really enjoyed visiting her and she had lots of really good information to share with us yeah so after the interview stick around because we're going to explain why we chose bamboo in the middle of the desert what can't you grow? And yeah. we didn't know that we could grow bamboo until just recently and so our big tropical one over there basically just lost its leaves and grew a new batch in two weeks Oh, wow. And now it looks better than ever. So, so was, they just become deciduous yeah. if, if they're right on the edge if of cold hardy. Yeah. If they're super tropical, they might just they might die. Because yeah. sure the leaves can die and fall off, but the canes are But if the canes okay. are alive, and then even, even in a worse cold situation, all the canes might die, but if the, the rhizomes and roots underground are still alive, then it just pops right back up. That makes sense. In a couple of years, it's as big as it was before. Huh. It's really amazing. It's interesting. It's just like a winter-filled lawn, you know, busting all over back in, yep. in spring. Yep. It's yep. the same kind of deal. because it's, it's, it's a grass. Yeah. That's right. Have yeah. you ever, like, gone to the actual country and got any of these species or we haven't but we know the guy that does yeah he's a guy in florida named robert that would uh, be fun robert saparito just you know his his meaning in life is he just travels all over the world finds new species of bamboo brings them into the u.s where they have to be quarantined for a year oh a year so some of the rare varieties that we have are rare because only one of them went uh, through the quarantine process yeah, that's, and then they had uh, you know arizona then, has strict quarantine yeah. well not just arizona but i'm talking about the u.s, the US wow yeah. okay. and actually arizona is pretty lax compared to california yeah we know we, drove, we can't yeah. 
sell a plant and drive it Across into California lines. legally. Right. And they people. will check too. Many of people do it and I'm they get sure away with it do. because lately, you know, everything's unfunded or underfunded. So right. the checkpoints aren't manned. Right, exactly. You know, la, la, la. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Strata we are too. careful about that. You know. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes people from California say, can I just come out and buy something and reward them? Well, you know. That's on you. It's on you. <laughs> yeah. If you buy them and then take them away. That long. makes sense, yeah. But, but yeah, they're really think a bamboo, Lisa. Process. Yeah. And another question people always ask Chopsticks. is, does bamboo ever flower? <laughs> yeah, it's what we just, the compost. So, of, so have you ever dug underneath, like at the base of these, and seen the effects of these leaves doing as mulch? Does that improve the soil at all? Well, it's got to be, but it doesn't do it. The, the volume of the leaves is so minuscule. Actually, when they break down, it's it's like nothing. nothing. Oh wow! So yeah, really after deciduous. after about thirty years in the bottom of our driveway, we have some pretty good topsoil going. I bet. But I don't think it's from the leaves. I think it's from the topsoil washing down from the rest of the property oh, every time it rains. I mean, the know? nutrients must go yeah. downhill, and it must get something. You from put it. a berm down here and catch it all, and we we try periodically. <laughs> But you know, it's, it's a lot to manage. Yeah, it yeah. is. And usually, when we get a good rainstorm, I'm out out here with my hoe and my rake, Directing trying to direct the... it to you know real quick to yes. some good spot. Yes, yeah, so it's not wasted. Yeah, exactly. We cause... planted ten trees yesterday. Ah. Various trees. We did, we have some. Um, what did we plant? Eucalyptus and some yews and some the nectarine and a Chinese very a real mishmash. Yes, well, a real we put mishmash. them really close to where we're staying, where our water cisterns are, so we can, you know, yeah. use our gray water. Yeah, because we're off, we're all off grid. We don't have running water. I mean, we have running water from our cistern, but we don't. We're not on city water or power. But yeah. we, uh, we did. That's what we did. So he yeah. dug the hole with an auger, a big uh -huh. auger because we have a lot of rock. That's kind of what it takes. Yes, yep. I'm familiar. Yep, and then filled the hole with mushroom compost and yes. some fertilizer. Well, that's the idea and... for bamboo. Yep. Except realize that that mix that you're using is much less dense than the surrounding soil. So yes. pretty soon it's a foot down and you yes. got to add more stuff. Keep adding or, it. Yep. Or just make a hill in the first place. So it, it. Yep. you know, it's, it's, it's rough, but I learned that the hard way too. It, it, density is so different yeah yeah even if you stomp it down and everything it's else not. and we we recommend adding sand if there isn't there oh we've got already. lots of sand okay so <laughs> yeah. sand bamboo likes okay but if you're planting in a really sandy spot yeah. then your problem is the drainage is too good and the water goes Doesn't away too quick to so yep but yep. you're familiar with all that so yeah so the idea for you with the bamboo is to plant it kind of out farther from the house and okay. make a big old because it's rotting yeah or, okay <laughs> yep um you can do it with you can start with one plant yeah and water uh, where the plant is obviously or right. it'll curl up and die but yeah. Yeah. water the plant and water 10 feet away on either side or five feet away on either side okay to say to it come this way <laughs> spread this over here the, now they're popping up over here yeah and okay. it might seem like a waste of water at first but be sure underground the rhizomes are going aha nothing. there's some water over there let's go that way okay. and you won't see it at first you just have to have faith that they're doing that but then, you know, in the spring, some new growth should show up. Okay, get the little shoots. Fencing. Yes. Fencing is going to be necessary in the okay. beginning. Okay. Because you have critters. No deer, matter. the yeah. deers, the rats. Deer, so antelope, rats, Just like rabbits. any other kind of gardening around yep. here. That's good to know then. You yep. kind of need. Protect it when it's you're small. You're going to have to protect it when it's small. Once yep. the plant is making woody canes, mm -hmm. they're not quite so tempting to the wildlife okay but you need to get it to that point when they're small and don't and... underestimate because you're putting a <laughs> salad bar out there yeah every critter within 50 <laughs> miles if they it's fly anyway it. it's gonna see it yep. and then yep. they'll tell their friends the rabbits to yeah exactly <laughs> and, the, and the cows yeah. love this i heard yeah cows love oh, it oh yeah so don't worry at all about it spreading too far no nope. yeah your worry is the other way to keep it alive long enough to spread as far as it wants. Get, 
to keep some critter from eating it, whatever. This, so now that I'm looking at this, I think our neighbor planted that in Seattle. Yeah. Probably it's um, a pretty it, common one. It's yeah. a golden kind of bamboo. block. Yep. Mm -hmm. Kind of it's right on the street on yeah. their property line. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Yeah. And did it pop up in your yard too? No, oh. it's on the <laughs> they, have, they have pretty good size lots. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was around the corner. Mm -hmm. But I, now I'm looking at it. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. It was just kind of to kind of block them in more mm -hmm. yeah. as a hedge yeah. type thing. Yeah, do yeah. yeah. I'm surprised that it was, so it would grow good there too in Washington. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so Washington. All the runners. Oh, really? In fact, I mean, it's all that water you're getting. Many yeah. lawsuits and arguments between Your neighbors and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Yeah, in no, that climate, them. they got beautiful soil. It rains all the time. Yep. They brought in pretty good sized starters. Yeah, mm, too. have you probably in a in a big old box or something from a big nursery? Yeah, because because on the west coast, bamboo nurseries are not uncommon. Oh. Around here, we're like the only one in the state. You are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. The only people crazy enough huh. to try something like it's this. It's working though. So. Yeah, it is because yeah. people just like it. It's Some beautiful, people, and know, I love the sound it makes. Want a Zen room. garden, or they just oh, want a yeah. screen of a plant that they can later build stuff with. Yeah, and use. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's the other thing is you get material from it. It's wood, you know. Yeah. Well, that you know, if all else being equal, as far as choosing a plant, there's one over here called stone bamboo. That's just a typical big runner, like any other one. It doesn't have any stripes or anything fancy, but it has harder wood than the oh. typical runner. Oh. Now, if you were actually building a house or something, yeah. you'd need a clumper. Or a scaffold. For, for that kind of wood. But but oh. uh, runners, huh. so runners in cross section look like this. Okay. Relatively thin wood, wall of wood. Clumpers in cross section look like this. Oh. Thicker wood oh, okay. with a smaller hole. Oh. Okay, So gotcha. that's why clumpers have to be used for you know weight bearing kind of construction yeah however we build wow. all kinds of crazy stuff with the runners uh <laughs> greenhouses you know fences yeah. you name it oh, anything yeah. that's not Trellises. holding a whole lot of weight you can you know build a gazebo or something relatively lightweight with. yeah and and if you have runners you can put three of the canes together wire them together and then suddenly you have one that's Super stronger strong. than the one. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's all kinds of tricks. And we are building a house. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're building Thinking a non-traditional house. Yeah. 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 We're building there's a guy. A oh, okay. So there's a guy somewhere down in that neck of the woods. Yeah. Um, and his outfit is called Terraform Together. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, okay. we know him. Yeah. We know. Richard. Richard. Yeah, Richard, Richard came Morris. here and bought like 450 bamboo poles to make a roof for one of his... Structure oh, shade, like a there. shade structure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, we need shade. <laughs> it was kind of the the heavy duty way to do it. Yeah. In retrospect, because because yeah. his roof might be stronger than the rest of yeah. the <laughs> structure. Right. But anyway, he, you know, he, he he bought a whole ton of it from us. That was really fun. It made two trips. To yeah. Go down there, made a little video. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. Us, See, pretty oh, much cool. about yeah. our bamboo pole. Yeah. I mean, we've been waiting back on Terraform together to get back to us, but uh, I guess uh, we threw his name <laughs> out there anyways. He's but. a little busy. <laughs> He's, He's a little all busy. busy. Yeah, exactly. Really nice guy. Yeah. yeah. He's building like we are. He's building, we're building hyper adobe. Okay. Everything's good. hyper adobe. Oh, that's neat. We're building dirt stuff. That's neat. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a lot of work though. Woo wee. So look at how pretty this is. Almost looks delicate. Oh, it, it actually like needs a, iron. That's why it's Is that why it's yellowish? Yellowish. Yellow -ish, Light but a lot of people like it anyway. Oh, so this is Phyllis Stakey's Angusta. Otherwise known as stone bamboo. It's a running bamboo. It means it's cold hardy for high elevations. And its special characteristic is that the wood is much stronger than the typical runner. Okay. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, bamboo is useful in, in many ways. And this one is extra useful just because the canes are a little bit stronger than, than most. Okay. And that's a runner, so that, that that's might be a, a good choice for us. Means it'll spread as far as as far as it can get the irrigation. Yeah, as far as we encourage it to. <laughs> that's right. So running bamboo has a reputation of 
you know, spreading out of control. And it can do that, but not in the desert southwest. Yeah. In the desert southwest, it needs encouragement to spread. Mm -hmm. And encouragement, encouragement means irrigation. Yes. And hopefully, at least in the beginning, some good soil some compost soil. with yeah. lots of nitrogen in it and uh, good aeration and, and all that. Everything that the desert soil doesn't have. All the things that are lacking. Yeah. But we don't have the problem with not having enough sun. <laughs> that's right. Sun we got. That's the trade-off. <laughs> sun we got. Yeah. So that's stone bamboo. Okay. This is a fancy one that's a yellow cane with a green stripe. The cane, you have to, it's a, you need an older plant to be able to see the stripes really clearly oh, on yeah. the canes. They haven't oh, yeah. really developed yet. But this is a fancy one that, that has a yellow cane with a green stripe. And it also has the fun characteristic of sometimes the cane makes a right angle oh. and another right angle and another right angle oh, and then cool. keeps growing. It's the darndest thing. It's it's really cool looking when it does I it. Bet. It looks really like cool. the handle of a hand drill or yeah, something. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it's just it's amazing. The fun stuff you can build with bamboo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But awesome. as far as with species, that's mm -hmm. one thing. But the actual plant start that is going to grow the fastest for you yeah. is the one that's got the most biomass on it right now okay. when you start. Okay. 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 That's that's just a given because that means that this particular start has been growing long enough to have lots of canes on it. Okay. Its roots and rhizomes are nice and established and they're just raring to go and want ready to get out of their pot and run and where you want them to go. <laughs> so, so a lot of these really are having a great spring and are making tons of new growth. These are the, these are the new canes. Wow, yeah, you can tell. So, oh, wow. The individual cane makes its full growth in about two months. Okay. Regardless of if it's a mature plant that's 40 feet tall or a young plant that's only six or 10 feet tall. Really? The canes grow to their full height in about two months. Okay. Then the individual cane can live for many, many years until it gets out competed by the other new ones. And then after many years, that cane will die and you snip it out and make a walking stick or build something with it. Okay. Um, but what happens is it's sort of rubbery and soft at first, and then as it makes branches and leaves, like this one's about halfway to maturity right now, it's got its branches, but it ha hasn't completely leafed out yet, and it's still, it's almost wood, but it's still a little bit yeah. flexible. Yeah. And then over the next couple of weeks, it'll con it will complete that transformation, turn okay. to wood, and then just live for many, many years until it's not needed anymore because the entire grove has gotten so huge all yeah. around yeah. it. Oh, so, awesome. and in this, in that way, it gets from a small thing to a huge thing in a few years. Wow. So every awesome. spring, it's going to make new canes. Okay. And those new ones, after it gets established enough, are bigger every year. Okay. The, the canes that are produced each spring are bigger every spring. Okay. So maybe next year it'll be making, say, half inch canes. Okay. The year after that, maybe one inch canes. And then after that, it's kind of up to you how much nice fish emulsion and chicken poop to yeah. you get yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to see it could, it could easily get up to two inches in diameter. Wow. Okay. And when it's making two inch diameter canes, it's about 25 or 30 feet tall. Wow. That's, the That's rule of thumb perfect for is, shade you know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 so that these are just yeah. some, of the, some of the species because these particular rows happen to be out in the full sun they are a little more developed than already, some of the other ones that are kind crowded of down into the shade and waiting for the sun to, to get there i mean bamboo is a real different looking form so there's some growing in here with the philostaches. And here's they kind of more denser them. leaves on it, right? They have much denser leaves, really short branches, a more straight up and down uh, kind of a habit. Okay. Not that they never lean, but they're just a, a different kind of form. Um, and extra cold hardy. I mean, one of the one of the cold hardier of the runners. Okay. Although I don't think cold hardiness is. A particular concern. No, we I don't mean, really get below 20. 
if we have a if we have another 2011 which was when we got down to 13 right here off oh, at our wow. yard if we have another one of those it might matter yeah you know at that point so temple and the congesta over there are rated well below zero okay okay um, some of the other ones all have their varied uh very cold tolerances according to the internet which yeah you yeah know, the the bamboo expert that decided what temperatures to put on the one website that you know basically has every bamboo in the world listed on it yeah um his data is limited so we don't take it as gospel we take it sort of as a starting point and, and we tell people, you know, I mean, the bamboo doesn't read the book that says it yeah. goes to 18 degrees. Right. It might only go to 20. And or it, if it's nice and humid, it might go down to 15. Right. Yeah. We don't know, right. you know. Right. And you've got the experience to be able to say, okay, well, it, this might be right, but this is yeah. what I know. You exactly. Know? <laughs> and what I'm going to do, too, like that check point. my notes because I made a little note about because I can't remember all the temperatures. Oh, here, oh, here. Yeah, oh. since '86. But there's Lisa. While it was a hobby, we planted a bunch of stuff. Sounds yeah. like tropical yeah. birds in here. <laughs> okay, so that one that I was hyping back there, the the stone. The bamboo, stone, minus yeah. Minus ten officially. Minus ten. So okay. If you were at minus ten, you're going to be so busy worrying about your water pipes that you know. Yeah. <laughs> The bamboo will be the least of your problems. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that is, you know, that is an extra cold hardy one. So that's good. Just about all of them uh, can go easily down to zero. Fair. 30 feet. But in okay. Arizona, oh, you know, that's probably the 15 or 20 is the tops. Um, but, you know, they can, they can get bigger than an inch in diameter. And, and the fact, though, <laughs> is that they are slower at spreading because they have this habit of running and then clumping densely and then running and then clumping densely again. Okay, so okay. like a hybrid almost. Yeah, it's a, it is almost, we, we call it a clumping runner or a running oh, clumper. Yeah. Um, a clumper. But a, it, it a definitely is a clumper. runner. <laughs> yeah. It's a clumper. A, a, um, <laughs> a rumper. A clumper. There you go, a rumper. A rumper. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, there's some people down in Hereford, I think, growing this and they are frustrated because it's not spreading fast enough oh and i'm feeling bad because i didn't explain it well enough or something oh. But, oh. but it's doing okay it's just taking longer than they were i mean this thinking. one would probably be ideal for like in a courtyard or something right yeah because it's, it's slower really... and you can kind of go hey stop moving this yeah and get back over here it's yeah, yeah. And, and he was gonna roll her off into the whatever <laughs> Oh man. Producer probably did that. <laughs> Answer the big question Can you actually grow bamboo in the Southwest? The answer is yes. And the reason we know that is because Holly and Matt, who own Bamboo Ranch in Tucson, have been doing it since 1986, and they're doing it successfully. Bamboo doesn't require as much water as you might think it does. Most of the time you might picture bamboo in like very lush tropical settings, but bamboo can do really well here as well. Yeah, and we why we chose to experiment with bamboo is because there's our trees here that grow here, you're looking at 20 years before it's going to be usable for any kind of lumber or timber or anything like that. But bamboo can actually be grown to usable sizes of wood within like a year or two. Like the cane will eventually develop and it'll spread. Uh, we, we did pick running bamboo as opposed to clumping bamboo. Clump, clumping will usually stay in the same area, like a three foot radius and just keep sh sending up new canes. And um, I believe that, that the clumping bamboo is built, is primarily for building, like scaffolding and building houses because it has more strength to it. 
but the running bamboo we got just because it's more prolific and it will seek out water itself but we can control uh, we can control the bamboo by where we irrigate. Yeah, it also serves as a good screen for wind and it can withstand a lot higher winds, which we obviously have a wind problem here up on the hill. And it can also be good for shading from the sun also. So if we can get this established, if we're finding that it's using up way too much water than, than we'd like, we can also just tuck it back into a pot and just manage it right there, you know? So we don't have to, we're, it's all a big experiment. People are like, bamboo in the desert, isn't that a tropical plant? But yes, it is. But we have all this sunshine and it should be able to grow well. It might be worth the water that it takes to grow it, to grow it just because of the shade and everything else that it provides. Mm -hmm. And of course, the more shade you have hitting the ground, the more the soil will retain moisture with some compost over top and some mulch. I'm All laughing set. because you have a rooster competing for the microphone over there. Yes. We got, you guys know we got some chicks and uh, one of them in particular is super loud all the time, like starting at 5 a.m. And I'm pretty, we're pretty sure it's a rooster. So you'll have to pardon him. He doesn't know how to mm -hmm. mute. <laughs> but yeah, running bamboo, a lot of people are afraid of it because they're afraid it's going to get out of control and spread in areas that they don't want it. But she, she made it really clear in the desert. It's not going to spread unless you water it there so it stays pretty controllable and it, it allows you to kind of control where it goes depending on where you put the water so yeah and these things will climb out of the pot eventually if we leave it one spot so it's way more manageable while they're in pots obviously yeah but uh here in the desert it's only going to grow. It's only going to send out those runners where you actually put the water hose at. So mm -hmm. if you want it to go off this way as a fence line, maybe mm -hmm. you could just Privacy lay down, screen. put down a small trench where you roll water down that thing. And that will send runners down there and make a nice little wall for you. Like yeah. maybe an outdoor si sitting area or something. Yeah. And depending on your conditions, it can grow pretty fast if you water it regularly and you know fertilize it and take care of it protect it from the wind when it's first getting established and the sun because it can get too much sun so you kind of want to protect it a little from that when it's still small but it can be a great privacy screen and um just it's just really pretty we really like it so yeah it's gonna make a good addition to our other wind blocking plants and stuff like that All right, another few reasons why we decided to try bamboo are the shoots are edible. So the running bamboo, what it does is how it runs is it sends up shoots and you can actually clip those shoots at certain stages when they're still little and tender and, and you can eat them. You can put them in stir fry or salad or whatever. The other thing that's pretty cool about bamboo is the, the foliage makes really good livestock forage. And you know, we've got goats and someday we'll have sheep maybe a cow or two and apparently they love the leaves so that's another reason we got it. the other thing you might be wondering about is your own climate we get cold here in the winter we've gone through one winter here so far and we get into the 20s and sometimes a little colder than that but not for very long periods you might be living in a place that gets cold like that and stays cold like that for a lot longer than here but bamboo actually is cold hardy certain certain types not all of them, but certain types can go down into the 20s and some of them even as low as 12 degrees. So if that's a concern, just keep that in mind. It's, you know, it actually is hardier than you might imagine that it is. Yeah, and propagating bamboo is <coughs> very, very simple. It's, it's a grass essentially, and you can just buy one plant and reproduce it as many times you wish and or can afford to water. And then bamboo also makes some really awesome ninja weapons <laughs> for those who like that stuff <laughs> thanks spear fishing <laughs> yeah if we I go back know. from primeval prim primitive yeah people. you can use the cane the canes though are the actual woody stem and the canes you can use for all sorts of stuff and different types of bamboo are harder than other types some are really good for construction some are not so you want to look into that when you're researching your bamboo too yep. also uh 
I believe running bamboo does not, I, there was a video back there where I was talking about I can't really plant trees because we hit caliche a foot down, right? <laughs> bamboo actually, all of its network of roots is within the top one <laughs> foot. So what better plant would be to plant out above caliche uh, where all the roots will want to go out sideways instead of downward into the impenetrable stone <laughs> uh, thing we got going on here. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed our little visit and our little tour here in uh, Cortland, Arizona and Tucson, Arizona at the Bamboo Ranch. Yeah, so stick around. We're going to have more videos. We'll do some follow-ups on how the bamboo is doing and growing and what we think about raising bamboo. And we'll do another video on that soon. But thanks for sticking to the end. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do go ahead and subscribe. Give us a like if you like this and leave a comment or question below. We'll see you soon. Adios. Cool. I'm gonna put the light track in here.